What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game High School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. So I've been taking a look at the Arkham games, going back and playing again from uh, a different perspective. I really do want to see how this game, you know, has been an influence in superhero games for the past few years. If you think about how Rocksteady, uh, you know, put this game together, they changed up everything about superhero games. After they made the Arkham games, it seemed like everybody crawled into a hole and just hid for years. <laughs> I mean, if your game was not as solid, nobody even really remembered. And this has been a good thing overall for the gaming scene. But there is now a new superhero game that seems to have a big budget attached to it. And a lot of people are talking about it. And that is the Gotham Knights game. This game has been so controversial. There's been a lot of different sides to the conversation, and I make these kinds of videos quite frequently because from time to time, these sentiments will pop up in comments, questions, or concerns, and it's not like they're popping up on some random place like you know Twitter or whatever. These usually come on our feed here in the comment section, and I like to highlight them because there are different aspects of the conversation that has to be you know talked about. Now, just recently, one of my audience members commented on this, and it was quite interesting to see the comment because we haven't mentioned these in the, you know, these, these uh, lines of uh, commentary in a long time. But here it is. They said this game will be a flop. I mean, it's crazy. The gameplay sucks. Looks like a PS3 2012 game. Should have just copy pasted from previous Arkham games and added new features. To me, I respect this comment because it's honest and it's straightforward. A lot of people mask this sentiment by trying to not, because they know they'll get flack. When you say, oh, it's not an Arkham game, I got flack too. When I first started, you know, looking at Gotham Knights and seeing what it was, I wished it was an Arkham game. And I made videos saying, man, I wish they would have some elements in the Arkham games. And some people were like, well, it's not Arkham. So why not kind of, you know, see the game for what it is? And I don't think they were saying don't compare the game to Arkham. I don't think that's what everybody was saying. Some people were saying that. But you kind of have to compare a game to Arkham, to the Arkham games. The Arkham games are landmark games. But they're saying it in a sense that, yes, the game is taken in a different, you know, uh, format that will probably differ very heavily from the Arkham games. And it does seem like it differs heavily from the Arkham games. Now, let's also keep in mind that the Arkham games started from somewhere. It probably started out on a great foot, like, you know, most very interesting and uh, landmark franchises start from. And then some other franchises don't necessarily start on the best foot forward until maybe multiple games down the road. Do you then start hearing about a developer or a franchise or a gameplay format in some cases? But we have to go ahead and take a look at all of this, because if not, these conversations are just going to continue to span out of hand without anybody addressing the nuances in them. So let's go back and look at everything that we can probably get a small snapshot of that happened before the Arkham games ever released. So were the Arkham games some kind of a crazy formula? Did they just actually realize that, oh, we're going to wake up and make the very best thing since peanut butter? I don't think that's the case. In fact, the truth is the developers did not even know they were making something special. And so Stephen Hill basically in a Reddit MAMA, many of you have seen this. And he's been working on games since 1996. He's the co-founder of Rocksteady Studios in 2004 with Jamie Walker. Okay, so here it is. It says, Stephen Hill, creative director of Rocksteady, the creator of Batman, Arkham Video Games, asked me almost anything. Someone asked him a question and said, how does it feel coming from Urban Chaos Riot response to being known as a creator of the single best superhero game of all time? Stephen says, it's surreal now. When we made Arkham Asylum, we had no idea it was going to be popular until very late in development. I remember demoing the game to the publisher at one time, and there was two people from the publisher in the room. After about three minutes of the demo, they went and got someone to join them, to join, then someone else, and then someone else. By the end of the demo, there was about 50 people crammed, crammed into this tiny room. It was then we started to think that we might have something a bit special. The Arkham games had the environment to flourish. This is Warner Brothers Games Montreal's first game. And I feel like that environment for it to flourish has just not been given to it because a lot of folk here in our community, we prefer the Arkham games and there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, we have to actually give this game that outlook. Don't buy it by all means. I'm not saying anybody should buy the game. I've seen a lot of folk talk about it. You know, uh, some folk have said, oh, the game's going to be a floppy game. And I know why they're saying it. They're saying it because they haven't necessarily either come around or made peace as to exactly how they're going to approach the game. And when I say come around, I'm talking about in a situation where I was like, okay, let me see what this game is about. Let's see what's so special about this format. 
and let's give it a shot to see if it actually does measure up in its own right to a video game that's trying to achieve that format, an RPG game. In a sense, what it is is they're kind of tilted, and this is what I think based on this comment that we just saw. I think they're kind of tilted that the game was not necessarily made like an Arkham game, but they just don't want to admit it because it's not really popular to say stuff like that. And so they would love, love, love for the game to go back to being like an Arkham game down the road. I've made many videos to mention that if anybody wants an Arkham game, the people you should be talking to is Rocksteady. They are the ones that make the Arkham games. They are the ones that decided that they were going to stop make the you know that they were going to stop making the Arkham games. So if there's anybody that actually has you know any time for any of that, it's definitely them. And I think right now Gotham Knights is just in a really interesting spot because yes, it decided that it was going to take this franchise to a whole different place. And I'm telling you, man, a lot of folk are being very protective have just responded that way. And to be very fair and to be honest with you guys, if you ask me what my expectations for Gotham Knights are, I don't know. Honestly, I think the game is going to do well. It does have a lot of marketing power to it. I think the game mechanical wise, the game is actually quite good for an RPG game. It's just the skin that they threw on it being basically the superheroes, the Bat family members are what's kind of weird for a lot of people and seeing how Avengers, you know, pretty much did everyone in the past few you know months and years or whatever it is since the game came out it's been two years about almost two years i think these are the things that many people are actually taking into gotham knights in today's day and age how it's going to play out is going to be very interesting because for some they don't really like all these systems in video games a lot of people like the really fast-paced uh you know systems that you're going to find in most games today you know you just go in there beat a bunch of bad guys do a bunch of missions fight bosses and so when you think about, say, Gotham Knights, ooh, it just makes some people go, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to be uh, doing some flashy stuff. I don't want to be, you know, seeing numbers flying around. But there's a time and a place for stuff like that. You know, if you play the Assassin's Creed games, I think you're going to like Gotham Knights. If you play games like, say, God of War, I think you're going to like Gotham Knights. If you play games like, say, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, you're going to like Gotham Knights. If you are into playing, say, maybe the Arkham games or games that have a little bit more of a fantasy to them, action adventure games uh, that are not fully RPG, but light on RPG elements and stuff, then I think that's where the distinction comes in. And it's fine. A lot of people just need to, need to know exactly where they are in terms of a game that they want to play. So maybe a game like God of War Ragnarok might be fitting for you. You know, it's a game that's one and done. It's gone. Gotham Knight seems to be a game that wants to have continuity to it. So the distinctions are going to be very interesting to see how people respond and react to it. I'm getting Gotham Knights. I'm excited to see what the project's about. I'm excited that's an Unreal Engine 4 game. I'm going to be taking a very close look at it. Um, the way the voice acting is, the way the um, characters, the, uh, the story and the progression are going, to me, is really interesting to take a look at. But anyways, I just thought I'd bring this up again and just talk about it from this, uh, you know, the origins perspective and hear you guys' thoughts on the matter. Thanks so much for watching the video. I really appreciate you guys' time and audience, and hopefully we'll talk soon. Peace out.